In the United States, the people choose our representatives, including the highest official in the land, the President of the United States. The American people did this on November 3rd, 2020. But President Trump did not like the outcome. He did everything he could to change the result of the election. He tried litigation, 62 cases in fact, and that failed. He tried to pressure state legislatures to reverse the results of the election in their states, but they refused. He tried to enlist the Department of Justice in his efforts to overturn election results, but officials leading the department refused to comply. So eventually, he latched on to a completely nonsensical and anti-democratic theory that one man, his own vice president, could determine the outcome of the election. He wanted the vice president to unilaterally select the president. This theory that the vice president could unilaterally select the president runs completely contrary to our Constitution, our laws, and the en entirety of our American experience. But that didn't stop, uh, didn't matter to President Trump. I would now like to explore how President Trump came to latch on to this ridiculous legal theory that the vice president can select the president of the United States. Mr. Jacob, how did this theory first come to your attention? The first time that I had a conversation with the Vice President about the 12th Amendment and the Electoral Count Act was in early December, around December 7th. Uh, the Vice President called me over to his West Wing office and told me that he had been seeing and reading things that suggested that he had a significant role to play uh, on January 6th uh, in announcing the outcome of the election. He told me that he had been first elected to Congress in 2000 and that one of his earliest memories as a congressman was sitting in on the 2001 certification um, and he recalled that Al Gore had gaveled down a number of objections that had been raised to Florida. And he asked me um, mechanically, how does this work at the joint session? What are the rules? And I told the vice president that, um, in fact, I had a fairly good idea of how things work, that actually there aren't rules that govern the joint session, but what there is is a, a provision of the Constitution that's just one sentence long, and then an Electoral Count Act that had been passed in 1887. And I told the vice president that I could put a memo together for him overnight that would explain the applicable rules. So, Mr. Jacobs, when you looked at this theory, what did you conclude? So, we concluded that what you have is a sentence in the Constitution that is inartfully drafted. But the Vice President's first instinct when he heard this theory was that there was no way that our framers, who abhorred concentrated power, who had broken away from the tyranny of George III, would ever have put one person, particularly not a person who had a direct interest in the outcome because they were on the ticket for the election, in a role to have decisive uh, impact on the outcome of the election. And our review of text, history, um, and frankly just common sense all confirmed the Vice President's first instinct on that point. There is no uh, justifiable basis to conclude that the Vice President has that kind of authority. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.